Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Cold Outreach Success Stories, uh, where we interview regular business people just like you who have achieved consistent business results using cold outreach on email and other channels. We go deep into their process with hot tips around personalization, messaging, and targeting to make sure that you take away some good ideas to make your cold outreach successful. Today we have on board Chris Chapman. Chris is the founder at Elevation, and that's spelled with a Y. They have an in-house digital marketing agency that helps businesses get more customers, period. They are a fully in-house agency and they do SEO, website development, paid advertising on Facebook, Instagram, Google, LinkedIn, YouTube. They've been noticed by brands like ABC, Shark Tank's Damon John, HGTV's Love It or Listed's Jillian Harris, on Bravo's Million Dollar Listing LA's James Harris. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Hey, great to, great to be on. Super pumped to do this. All right, man. I'm really excited as well. Those are some big names. Yeah, yeah. Believe me. As soon as sort of our team saw that, we were like, whoa, you know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> awesome. So I, I guess there's some more detail there. So what do, you guys, what do you guys do in a bit more detail? Like what does a typical project look like for you? And uh, how do you get more, get more customers? Cool. So we started out as like an SEO agency. That's sort of our bread and butter. We, we crush it online. Um, we have our own technology, like our own dashboard and stuff for clients. So yeah, we're, we're pretty invested in that, but we, we get results, which is the main thing. Um, however, we started out there and our clients sort of over the years asked us, hey, you know what? I would love to do SEO, but I also need a website. So that's how the website development team was born. Same thing. Okay, we're crushing it. Uh, with our website, uh, we're crushing it with SEO. But what about lead gen? You know, everybody's talking about Facebook ads, Google ads. How can we crush it there? Cool. So that's how the lead gen was sort of born. So all in all, it's kind of cool because as soon as we started with the initial project of just helping businesses with SEO, we kept getting these inquiries from clients and people, and we we started to branch out. So it's been really, really interesting. But you, you said it best, man. Like what we do is simply help businesses get more customers, right? Whether it's calls whether it's clicks on their site, uh, whether it's people going in, whatever it is, that's sort of our specialty, using digital marketing tools. Right. And, and what I like about that story is, is not that you were sitting in a, in a room somewhere and you cooked up this idea of like, let's do IG ads, let's do FB ads. It was more organic. Like it was what yeah. the clients wanted. And I, I feel it just turns out different if it's you know coming from a market demand, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, my goal, to be honest, has always been I wanted to be like the Gary V, right? I wanted to have a full agency, which I'm pretty sure everybody in this industry sort of wants, right? Physical offices, um, you know, the people here, which we have. And that's sort of been the goal. But the problem at first, and it's funny because it was actually kind of a different story, right? Before we went full, um, you know, balls to the wall with the SEO, we kind of started with everything. And it was just me and one other person, right? We were like, yeah, we do Facebook ads, we do this, blah, 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 blah. And we weren't really specialized or focused. And then we had to take a step back and be like, okay, what can we really crush first? And then you know, and it's funny because, in fact, we didn't want to do websites. We didn't want to do paid ads, right? We were like, we just do SEO at the start. But then we got more and more and more and more and more inquiries about it. And we're like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. So it's definitely been an interesting route. That's really good to hear. So how are you acquiring more customers? Is it like cold outreach or mostly referrals? What, what, does, a typical, what does your typical process look like? The goal is definitely referrals, right? Referrals are the best because they're they're warm, if not hot, sorry, hot leads, solid leads. I would say honestly, about seventy percent, if not more, of our business is cold email, right? Everybody says cold email is dead. That's not true. Cold email is the best way, I would argue, next to paid ads. You can look at my smile, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it's true. <laughs> it is true. But you know what? Think of it like this. Those people saying cold email is dead, that's cool because they're missing out of that opportunity and that leaves more of it for you know people who listen to this sort of podcast, people like yourself and I. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So cold email, right? So how do you sort of get their data? Who do you decide who to target? Yeah, so uh, pff, everything under the sun we've tried, right? And we're still trying. Um, so when we first started, uh, we tried things like, you know, buying lists buying lists is not necessarily the best way because a lot of those a lot of those lists are usually abused i like to say just people that have been hit up way too much right 
So obviously we didn't really yield results. But then we started using tools like D7. Um, D7 is just like the software tool. You go on their site, you type in sort of the city and the keyword, and they'll scrape for you. And then we sort of evolve because at first, like this whole thing has been an evolution, right? At uh, first, we just took the list, sent them out, didn't get results. And then we started verifying the emails, which are very, very important. And now we get way better results from that iteration. But to be completely honest, uh, we even do things like, you know, going on Google for a particular keyword or a particular industry or city. And we'll literally just go through the, the pages, go on the websites and manually scrape ourselves. And to be completely honest, that has yielded the best results. Right. Right, because those leads are not, uh, you know, are hidden in some sense from the other businesses who haven't taken the time and the thought to really uh, sort of stand out in that sense. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, this is, there's really no secret, right? There's no secret. like, And that's what we were talking about before uh, we started recording. But, you know, a lot of people are sort of talking the talk. And I would even say they're really not. They're just perceiving or hoping that you perceive them to be uh and a lot of them are full of bs right if you actually do the hard work do the actual work you will succeed and those things will yield the the greatest results it's it's honestly not like hey you know there's this sort of trick it's literally are you going to do the work Good. yes or no if you will you will succeed no i completely agree and uh, you know <clears throat> if you talk to someone who's actually put in the work they don't they don't like throw around platitudes like you need to be 100 percent committed or something like that because that is obvious right everyone you know starts their business 100 percent committed that's the like bare minimum what you need to do beyond that is be creative right it's not about just buying a list and spamming those and then if you don't get results you just sit around thinking oh cold outreach is that cold email is that didn't work for me yeah. didn't work <laughs> because yeah, there's one more level to it right you 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 stopped at level one in that video game you need to sort of you need to play beyond get to level two get to level three then you'll see the then you'll see the results maybe yeah gamification is huge in this industry you you have to make it almost like a video game i look at life like a video game yeah. every single thing i do or anybody on the team or the business or just in general right you're at a certain level and like you just said if you start with cold email or if you just start with email uh lead gen or whatever period you're gonna fail but welcome those failures because you're one step closer to succeeding. Completely agree, man. Completely agree. So how how like let's go let's go into a bit more of bit more of detail, right? For example, what does a typical email campaign look like? How many prospects do you send to? And like how many times do you follow up? Cool. So we tried multiple different campaigns, right? Different strategies. We've literally done things like we're just going to grab a list off of something like D7 or Lead Kahuna, or there's a really cool one called Lead.Guide, and that's the website. I would urge you to check that out. That's a newer software. Uh, shout outs to my buddy David who started that. Um, but we would just collect the list and send it out. Obviously, that doesn't really yield results. Again, it's about the hard work, right? If something seems too easy, it, it probably is. You know, so um, I'll just say right now, the most successful things that have yielded the best results for us, honestly, and keep in mind, this is for us with SEO, right? Because it definitely depends for um, what sort of industry or what product or offer you're selling, right? So for lead gen, it may be a, di a bit different, definitely on the copy. Um, but what I can speak to is definitely SEO, right? Now with SEO, it's been going on Google, literally typing in like a keyword and a city and going through those lists, right? Going from pages two to 10 or two to 15, depending on how many people actually have um, their info on the site. Because a lot of them, unfortunately, just have like contact forms now, right? That's what I've noticed. So you'll go on and there's no email and it's like, oh crap, I just wasted that, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever, right? But that's okay. But the point I'm trying to make is like that took a lot of effort, right? And therefore, it's a higher quality. So I call that sort of email campaign like a high quality um, or a detailed email. That's what I sort of categorize it as with my email team. But then we also do things like, you know, scraping off of, again, tools like D7 or something, getting these lists, putting them through an email verifier, just so we can make sure 
Um, we're not sending to like spam traps or to uh, people that are going to block us, right? We don't want those failures because those will shut down our email accounts, um, but we verify and then we would send out different things. Sometimes they're very, very detailed emails, which I can definitely talk about the copy um, or it would be something like, Hey, like for example, right now, a good one, uh, a lot of my friends are using is, Hey, are you taking virtual appointments right now? Uh, hit me back with a yes and your best number and let's chat. Right. And that's for uh, like uh, Legion. Sorry, Legion, uh, because virtual appointments, obviously with the closures and stuff, right? right. Um, but even things like, hey, are you open right now? Yes, the whole idea is to get a yes. That is it, right? Because as soon as you get a yes, then it's almost like you're, you're in that conversation, right? And then what I would honestly do is just call them after that. And instead of calling and be like, you know, a, a random cold call, hey, uh, looking for the business owner, and I've done this in the past, right? Hey, looking for the business owner, who are you? Um my name's Chris, you know, like cold, uh, a cold call. But since they answered to the email, you would literally be, Hey, uh, Hey, um, just responding to the email you sent me, you know, boom. And it automatically, the authority, the credibility is there. So it's all about like leveraging, right? But hopefully that answered your question somewhat. <laughs> that's really detailed. That's really detailed. And I love that particular, um, tactic of using an email, a simple yes to convert a cold call into a warm call because ultimately it's, it's all about starting conversations, you know, business is yeah. about people, you know, if you can, if, if we're talking, you know, there's a higher chance that we get into business at a later date because you see me, I have a face, two eyes, one knows you, it, it, this, there's no sort of just hiding behind an email and just sending an email. You. You all, all that it takes is to start a conversation, right? You can start a conversation with a simple question, or you can start a question with a detailed email that lists out like, this is what's wrong in your strategy, SEO strategy right now. But yeah, I mean, um, the basics, they stay the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I probably shouldn't, but I'll even add to this with regards to what you just said, like that's what our detailed emails are, right? It's literally being like, Hey, saw you guys. Keep in mind, again, this is for SEO, right? Um, but for us, it would be like, hey, saw you guys when uh, looking for research for one of our clients um, for, you know, keyword plus city. So if it's like, um, you know, SaaS Toronto, where we're based, like a SaaS company in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, and there's some issues with your site. Uh, for example, uh, did you know? And then we would actually take like a screenshot of how many, uh, so like what the search volume is of that on Google and mark it in red, right? So for example, it'd be like, hey, you know, came across your business while doing some research for a client looking up, again, like SaaS in Toronto, or let's say something more specific, electricians in Toronto, right? Uh, notice a few issues with your site and a lot of your competitors are taking away your business. And then we would send a screenshot showing them exactly how many people are searching, for example, in Toronto, it would be like 3,000 people searching for electricians a month. So we would actually show them um, a screenshot for the proof. And then what we'd actually do is link their top competitors. Uh, take a look below. Here's a couple of the competitors taking away that traffic. The whole idea is to really create that authority, that credibility, right? You're showing the proof. But what I will say, though, Keep in mind, this has yielded amazing results. We've got a lot of clients using that email, but that email can be marked as spam very easily, right? If you're using something like Gmail or G Suite with Google, because one, you're adding an image, right? Which is kind of frowned upon. Two, you're adding links, which again is frowned upon because obviously like hackers and stuff. Obviously we come at it from a pure stance, right? We're trying to help. We're trying to prove the credibility, authority, expertise, all that stuff. We're obviously not trying to spam or anything like that or put uh, viruses, but the whole idea with the email and it does work, right? Um, is to build up that, that credibility and expertise because here's the thing. Once you get replies, you know, these people are qualified, right? Because they know exactly what you're selling or what you're offering. And if they reply to you, it, it literally means they're interested, right? Yeah. Unless they, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's a really good strategy. I've heard some other people use it as well because it's such a highly personalized one that it, you know, it's no longer really a cold email because you've actually done the work up front. You, even if you don't close them, you've added value, right? You, you've told them up front that this is like this dollar value. This number is what you're losing out on. If, if an average 
uh, you know, traffic to your website is worth something like, I don't know, a, a cent, you know, then there are 3000 of them and the funnel is just going apart because your customers, your competitors are taking all the traffic away. And in that sense, you've added value, you've created, and you've started the conversation on an equal footing because you're not just some cold emailer trying to get their attention. You're a person of value because you actually told them something that is of real value to them. So it's, it's an amazing strategy and I've heard a lot of other people use it well, but yeah, the mm-hmm. only caveat is what you mentioned in terms of uh, Gmail and all these other algorithms being really strict with the spam thing. So in this, you know, there's something, I don't know, I don't want to sort of come across as self promotional or something, but this is something that we're working on in terms of the software, what we're trying to do, what a software does. So it's a way to, I'm I'm not sure I should say this on the podcast, maybe we'll edit it out, but yeah, I mean, what we essentially do is um, for all our customers, we have the software that is our software, email automation software that's sitting on top of their Gmail accounts, right? So we just have an opt-in. So for example, if we have 50 customers, then Chris, your email account would send dummy emails to all 49 of them, right? And they will, and our software will pick that email up, mark it as important and reply back to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So a warmer, yeah. It fools the Gmail algorithm and suddenly you'll see your images and your links not going in spam. Yeah, I, you know what? That's amazing because I'm all the time. I'm trying to like learn of other softwares and just tools that can help me. So I would love to chat about that. Believe me. Like once you, the thing is like, if you're brand new to sort of email marketing and stuff, you'd be like, ah, screw it. I don't need something like that. Yeah. Well, you do because you're going to be doing things like, you know, buying email accounts, which we can talk about it in the podcast too. I buy a ton of email accounts, right? Just with the idea of, uh, whether they're old email accounts, I have a lot of like 2014, so six year old email accounts now that I purchase, um, all the way to like email accounts that were made tomorrow kind of thing, things that will be made, right? And emailing or sorry, warming up like you guys are talking about is super important. In fact, I could even send you a number of uh, companies that I just discovered not too long ago that do something very similar yeah. that I think you can model from, right? You could check out what they're doing, dissect it, but it sounds very, very um, similar to what they're doing. Point is, this thing is very important. You need this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's becoming more and more important because um, Gmail and all of these other email providers are realizing that people are doing cold email. Right? They're mm-hmm. not. They're not stupid. They're sitting in Silicon Valley and with all these amazing engineers. They they have the AI for the ads. So they have they're building this kind of AI to detect cold emailing domains, right? And it's not that hard to detect. Because they, this particular domain wakes up every day and sends out uh-huh. 100 emails to each of, you know, to, to random people and gets only like 5 to 10% reply rates. The patterns are sort of clear to, to sort of, you know, find out if they really want to. And I think they are becoming more and more strict with, as time goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh- yeah, <laughs> because they don't want people spamming. I mean, I even get them all the time. Funny enough, I have a younger brother in university, right? And he gets emails like that. I'm like, why are you getting emails? Like, you're a student. You don't have a business. You're not working. Like, why? You know what I mean? But he gets them. So it makes sense that they do that. The problem is that's people literally sending millions of emails a day. And you better believe that's happening, right? Push of a button, million people hit. And that's the kind of people you don't want to be like, right? That's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to help people, right? With their business. We have a a very valuable offer, right? That actually helps. So it kind of sucks because even though we're still quote unquote, like cold emailing and stuff, Google and all these providers, Yahoo, Outlook, um, MSM, whatever, still puts us somewhat in the same basket. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's sad because it's like, they are sort of spoiling the water for everybody or however you call it. And that's mm. it. Okay. Let's go a bit deeper into your uh, cold email copy, right? So how do you yeah. actually find a high performing email copy? Do you AB test a lot or what does that process look like? Yeah. Like I don't like the term AB test because you're making it very binary. It's like one or two. Correct. We have so many different combinations. Like it wouldn't even be like A to Z. It's like A to like quadruple z if not more you know because we're always testing and we're always trying 
even we'll go back into the the uh, database of what we have like we have all these different email copies we have different signatures we have different subject lines and stuff um and we'll even mix and match right and the the point is like you just got to test like there's no sure way there are def definitely ways to do things that will give you a better shot technically right uh technically but you never know because you could literally do a super customized email to the people that you hand scraped not hear a single word and it's happened to me and then all of a sudden i just bought a list of like a million people that again in my my terms are abused that have been hit tons and tons of times with email and the reply and it's like what the hell you know just with the simple like hey this is what we do you want to buy it yeah sure and it's like you shouldn't be saying yes so you just got to test right you just got to test and what i implore everybody to do is find a system find a system really really pound it right beat it up and really almost not i don't want to say perfect it because if i say perfect it people are going to be like i'm not moving on until i get this absolutely perfect and nothing is perfect right but really have it pretty sustainable where you can kind of walk away if it's like you're going to get your team or have people run the system or if you're going to use automation software right but have multiple things going right so we have like the detailed emails we have very very cold emails we literally buy lists send a very generic email we have in between but we have multiple systems running right it's not just this is the way it's done you have to try and here's the thing too and, and i think this will be very important right again i i've taken a lot of courses i spent a lot of money i've worked with a lot of coaches quote unquote and the reason i go like this is because i don't really believe in that stuff but a lot of people will attribute their successes to the last thing they did to get them the result right so for example if you are some guy that's trying to get ripped and i'm talking about you know working out because everybody under the sun can relate to this say you were overweight right and say you just started working out okay here's a fact for you if you're a beginner working out that first six weeks six to eight weeks you're not going to see any results no results right and that's just the sad reality but here's the thing if you were to go ahead and you know work out work out work out the first six weeks you're not going to see any result and you may say oh that program sucks right and then the seventh week you change up your program or you add a supplement or change your diet and all of a sudden you start seeing results you're gonna be like holy shit this thing works so well that's not true you didn't really look at all the other effort you did and we can even change this to like an entrepreneurial standpoint where it's like you know i don't know if you ever seen uh, it's kind of like it's kind of been a bigger thing on youtube and stuff now where it's like if i had to start all over this is what i would do right a lot of these like quote-unquote gurus are talking about it if i had to start all over and it's like yeah, okay, I understand. But what a lot of people don't understand is you got to take into consideration, like if somebody started with no money, that's already been successful, whether they're a millionaire, billionaire, whatever it is, however you define success, right? Yes, they can easily make it back because they have the skills. And what I mean by skills is they know the right people to talk to. They know how to find these people to talk to. They know how to qualify them. They know how to pitch them. They know how to speak. They know how to sell them. They know how to use their tonality, what words to and not to use. Like, you see what I mean? It's almost like a giant spider web. And what I, again, my original point is people will be like, you know, this is the way to do things. That's not true because you're not taking into consideration all the other points. Like somebody starting with email right now could go ahead and try something and it could not work out. Right. And they'll be like, oh, this thing doesn't work. And I could go in on a brand new campaign, but I already know what kinds of copy works, right? What kinds of words work and the opposite doesn't. What should I include? What shouldn't I include? Right. What kind of subject lines would work? What wouldn't? I already know these things. So I could literally say, like, I'm going to start a brand new campaign today. And I know I could already get results because I know what works and doesn't work from my previous history because I already have that skill. You see what I'm saying? So, again, what I'm trying to say is, don't believe if somebody says there's only one way because there's not. And that person isn't considering all the things they've learned and all the experience they're bringing for that one thing. So I know that was a bit of a ramble, but I think that's very important because I've been fooled many times being like, oh, you know, even if it's sales, oh, you know, you've got to do like a one phone close instead of like all this follow up and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. 
but I wasn't at that level of like an absolute sales killer yet. And I couldn't do one phone closes. You see what I mean? But, yeah, so. no, I, I completely agree with this. And this is something that I have thought about as well, because, you know, fundamentally the world is full of surprises, you know, there's two things that changed. The first is the, the coaches experience, you know, again, coaches, because I completely relate to that. The coaches experience during, um, say they did seven things, right? Like, let's take the bodybuilding example. Um, they got their diet, right? You know, they got their sleep, right? Sleep is one of the most commonly ignored things in bodybuilding while it's so important. They got their, um, you know, supplements at week number seven. They won't attribute it to having great sleep over the last six weeks. They will, have, they would have attribute it to the supplement and sell the supplement because it's an easier positioning to sell. It, mm -hmm. it can be like, Oh, you need to get eight hours almost every day. Um, mm -hmm. and be so tired that you just pass out because you've been working out like crazy and doing all the hard work. Ultimately what sells, I feel what sells is a simple story. Complicated stories are hard to sell. Right. And that's why they pick one thing, right? Because one thing, you can remember right? this particular supplement um, by this particular guy is great. You know, like coming back to the bodybuilding example, because that's something that I've been, um, you know, interested in. Um, there's this guy from Vancouver called Jeremy Athier. You might have heard of him, might not. He's, he's mm -hmm. got a great prog program called Build with Science. So he actually reads a lot of these scientific papers and he came up with a proper routine uh, proper like it was a four day split at least for a beginner like me so i started doing that like a year ago and within two months i didn't see literally i didn't see anything while people on his facebook group just saw amazing results and i was like oh, well this doesn't work i mean this clearly bs something is going on and i'm not sure i was doing almost everything right except the sleep in Sleep is that's why I mentioned that particular thing because that's happened to me. I wasn't sleeping well. I sort of had a really bad sleep routine, sleep cycle. I used to go to bed at you know two a.m. one day, you know six a.m. the other day, and all. Once I fixed sleep, I I started feeling a lot better. First of all, the second thing was actually um, you know lifting heavier weights as well. You know, so um, I saw progression. I saw all those results, and the diet got fixed. Is the 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 learning again is that. The world changes coming back to the cold email example, right? So even if cold email worked for somebody, well, right. For example, for you, if a cold email worked well for you in 2018 and you became a business coach, let's just say a hypothetical route in your career journey where you became a business coach, like who's teaching cold email. Now, the, now the world has changed a lot since 2018, right? Gmail's algorithms are much more strict as you were talking about. So those tactics, those, those one, you know, nugget. Like this is the template that you need to use the killer template and this will get your results. It won't work anymore. What works ultimately is a mindset and a process. That's it. Nothing else works. The, the principles don't change. What changes is the complexity that the world throws at you. You have to be appreciative of the world's complexity. Otherwise, you know, this success is just really understanding the world's complexity in some sense. Right? This is something that I've thought about as well. That's why I, I it really echo, echoed my thoughts with, when you were uh, talking about that spider web because that's a similar analogy I had also thought of in some sense. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you have. <laughs> no, that's really good, man. That's really good to see. Um, okay, coming back. Uh, okay, cold emailing process. What mistakes did you make at first? I think we covered a lot, but like a top top couple of mistakes or top three mistakes that you made that you would advise yeah. somebody not to make. Okay. Sending too many emails at once. That was the first thing. Common Sending one. too little emails at once. Um, that's something, right? Meaning, and that I'll actually dissect into two points. So sending too many emails. First, I thought, hey, like everybody, right? Hey, I got a list of a couple, I got 10,000, right? Or a thousand or a couple hundred. I'm going to send that all on one email account. Boom, ban, blocked. Okay. <laughs> They're all going to send. And using it and, and not warming up an account right? Not warming up an account is very detrimental because you have to, you have to show you're human and you have to, even if you're using software, I use lots of software. Okay. Even a lot of my emailing is automated, but I have it set up in a way that it's humanized. So it almost looks like I'm doing it. You know, there's how, even there's a lot of like, um, I guess not so much for Instagram, but mainly LinkedIn. A lot of people are spamming now on linkedin and it drives me nuts personally but you have to humanize it right there's a lot of softwares out there that do the same or you can even set it up like you can set up automated rules if this then that if this happens then don't do that you know what i mean 
um, but humanizing emails so it doesn't look like it's spam coming up with copy that looks like you actually are taking the time right because i have even gotten people that literally said thank you for writing a personalized email i kid you not right because so many people are spamming these people especially if you're in like a digital agency business like i am people all the time even when you have clients they're gonna get emails phone calls messages dms ads whatever it is of people trying to get their business right so you really have to stand out um oh man i made a point what was it the second one is not sending enough emails especially when i was getting started this i think this is more so like the entrepreneurial uh, route of talking and i even talk to a lot of people now that i try to help out on like facebook instagram linkedin whatever it is and they'll be asking me questions hey how do i first get started in the agency business and i'm like okay well tell me how you're doing outreach right tell me how you're really reaching out and trying to get business how many emails did you send today oh i sent you know five or ten or twenty emails and i kid you not i did this at the start i literally would send five maybe ten emails a day and i was like in eight hours, or sorry, I was saying I was working 14, 16 hours at the time. Wow. Nobody does. Nobody does that because you have so much time going elsewhere. Oh, I'll just look at my phone for a second. But you'll still count that as working. Yeah. Yeah. I would literally send in those eight hours, 16 hours, 10 emails and be like, that was a good day. I got a lot out. I got a lot done. You know, And I would never get results. I would never get inquiries. I would never get replies. And I was like, what the hell? This thing doesn't work, right? But it's because I wasn't sending enough emails. That's simply what it is. Or I wasn't doing enough DMs. I wasn't doing enough outreach is what I'm trying to say. Right? So that's sort of been the main things. Um, personalization with the copy in the body of the email. Right? You can even automate it. Like you can get different softwares where it's like you'll make like, you know, first name in brackets and that software will go in your CRM, create an email. And whenever it sees first name, it'll, it'll put that person's yeah. first name in it. Same with like URL to the website or I don't know, the, the area, right? Like you can automate this stuff, but it's more and more personalized. That's the whole point. And trying to make it look human, right? Trying to make it look human, not being like, you know, uh, we are this, we are this. Like, don't talk about yourself. Nobody cares about you. Like, understand that, you know, you can't be narcissistic. And that's honestly why I, I'm still not nervous but i still don't really like doing these interviews because i hate talking about myself even though i've been doing it the entire time but talk about the other person right and then see if you're a good fit so when you're sending these emails be like hey i noticed you're having this trouble this is the problem you have really bring up that problem pour the salt in the wound or punch the bruise you know this is the problem you have this is the problem again oh did you notice this problem you have like same thing over and over and over again and then eventually people will feel that pain and reach out to you um hey yes you know send me uh, give me a call hey yes let's chat whatever it is hopefully that's enough i, I don't know you, you can i that's, guess keep that's really it. amazing man that's really amazing because i relate with this a lot um similar experience back in 2018 i would send like 10 15 linkedin messages per day and I was like, why am I not getting clients for my software? It is such an amazing software. We put in so much effort building it. But so it was targeted towards sort of VP of sales in the US. But, you know, nobody's buying this. I mean, what's going on? But yeah, that's one of the things that I have realized as well. Because there's two things. The first is there are people who know how to put in the work. There's people who know how to get an output. You, yeah. once you become successful, you sort of start decoupling this part, right? You say that. Okay, input is just one thing, but I know I have to send a hundred emails per day with this level of personalization and you figure it out, right? You figure out that, okay, 50 of them have to be sent via from this list via this tool that replaces the first name and everything. And I have time over left for 50 good personalized ones and I'll just write them for the SEO client myself. But mm. this process, I think, I think everyone has to go through no, no, no amount of, you know, telling a fresh entrepreneur that you should do this will really work until he or she himself realizes, oh, like we've realized, right, in our careers that, okay, this won't cut it. Something else yeah. is needed. Yeah, that's, that's like we were saying too. Those people selling courses drive me nuts. Don't get me wrong. There are some courses that are worth it, but you really have to do your due diligence. Hear, you know, recommendations from other people. Yeah. Things of that nature. But a lot of these people making all that money in the course world are just full of shit if you talk to me, right? But 
that's just my opinion. What I want to say is this, though. Again, I told you when I first started, I was sending five, 10 emails a day, something like that, calling it a day. Now, just with their email system, we have other systems going, whether it's LinkedIn, paid ads, even just the SEO ranking of our site. Emails alone, we're sending about 30 to 40, sometimes 50,000 emails a day, okay? So just put that into perspective. We're getting a lot of inquiries every single day, right? And keep in mind, there are different levels in terms of quality. Some inquiries are very high quality because it's a very personalized email. They know exactly what we're trying to talk about. Hey, this is what we do. Let's help you out because this is your problem, right? All the way to very, very cold, hey, are you still taking um, virtual appointments with the closures? Something like that, you know? So keep in mind that is still a factor. But in terms of quantity, thousands, tens of thousands a day, every single day. That's what we're doing. So that's exactly why we're growing so fast. That's why we're getting noticed by those brands, I think. <laughs> um, and that's why we're getting results, right? Because we're doing the things not a lot of other people are doing, if any. Correct. No, that's amazing, man. I mean, scale definitely is one thing. Um, personal, you're combining that with personalization. That's also amazing. And you're sort of hedging your bets by sending to these lists, sending targeted ones, doing all of those. And it's not just about, you know, does everyone has 24 hours in a day. And that's when you invest in the system because you've realized that you can't do all of these by hand. Nobody can send 30 to 40,000 emails a day by hand and you figure out like, this is the tool I need. This is how I use it to personalize. And it's not about just spamming to, for example, folks like your brother, right? It's about finding at least somewhat of a fit with the right folks and then reaching out to them. Yeah, I completely agree. Keep in mind too, like that's important, I think. I'm sorry to cut you off, by the way. Yeah. We started at none. Like we started at five to 10 and then we worked our way up to 50 and then 100 and then thousands. Like it's, it's steps, right? We want to send hundreds of thousands a day because that's more touch points for us, right? That would be a goal. How, you know, effective can it be? I don't really know. But I, like we didn't just start at like, okay, you need thousands today. Let's go. Like you have to, step just think of it like a ladder right you always hear like russell brunson from click funnels uh, yeah. saying it's a it's a ladder or a pair of stairs right or the game like you said levels there's different levels so i don't i don't want anybody to feel overwhelmed or discouraged at the start this is what you have to do no no work your way up right learn the ins and outs but eventually you'll get to some level like that i hope like that's what you should aspire to do right right it's like you you can't bench 100 kgs on day one right it's, it's always about progressive overload. You bench yeah. something and then your muscle grows the next day because you've slept, you've eat, eaten right. It's, you know, success. I've, I've heard this quote that I really like. Success is boring. And I find that to be so true because it's all about just repeating stuff with a little bit of creativity here and there and just being persistent with it. If you're not bored, then you're, you know, then you're doing too many things. I feel like you're doing yeah. things because you've not really figured out like these are my channels and this is where my time should go. And I'll just leave the rest to time for me to tell. Right? Yeah, no worries. Cool. So in terms of your outreach process, what are you excited about trying to, um, trying to sort of improve your own cold outreach process? My cold outreach, I mean, especially with the, the day and age we're in with technology is, you know, there's always new things popping up. For example, obviously Google AdWords were there and then Facebook advertising and Instagram and YouTube, right? Now we have things like LinkedIn advertising, Snapchat. You can do uh, things with Reddit. You can do things um, with TikTok in the sense of influencers. Like there's so many different ways, right? And again, the whole idea is to start with a system, one, right? Build it up. Try to automate it if you can or have it delegated to a team, right? Um, team member or members and get them to run it for you and then start building the other one. So it's, it's honestly like building a city. You start with one little tiny thing and then you build it up, but you have multiple things going, right? Like you can even talk to six figure a month agency owners or seven figure a month agency owners, right? not a year, a month. These guys are making millions a month, right? And what they have is not just one system because think about it like this, right? Uh, as you've seen with the closures recently, all those people that had all their eggs in one basket have been obliterated because yeah. it's, I don't even know, maybe three months now or so, two, three months at this point. It, it's May. Um, 
since all the closures and stuff. And a lot of these people are still running around like chickens with their heads cut off because they're like, what are we going to do? Like, there's, there's no way to do this. And the point is, if one system fails, you still have a number of other ones working, right? So start with one thing and build up. Now, to answer your question, we're always looking for new technology, right? We're always looking for uh, other ways to do outreach, whether it's like influencers, whether it's blog posts, features like this, you know, where I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be on this podcast and just trying to get our message out, right? At the end of the day, we're, 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 trying to help businesses right we're trying to build a real business by helping others with the knowledge and expertise we've gained ourselves over the year actually get results a lot of people unfortunately in our business specifically take a youtube course or a a mini course and they think they're these experts we've been doing this for years man years right and we have some of that brand uh credibility now with as you've seen like damon john from shark tank shouting us out uh, but it took us years to get to that point. And a lot of these other people, unfortunately, are hustling other people, right? They'll be like, hey, we can get you hundreds of leads a month with Facebook ads uh, for a couple hundred bucks. Man, if you can do that, come work for me, honest to God, because I would love to hire you, right? It takes time and it takes money. And once you start working with these clients that have been through an experience like that, all the time I hear it oh, you know, digital marketing doesn't work. It's a scam, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, we're trying not to do that. We're trying to be transparent all the way from our dashboards that we have where you can see all the results we give you in real time, whatever it may be. But again, you know, there's not really one way to do things. I'm all over with this answer. I apologize, but there's not really one system we're looking at. We're always trying to up our email amounts. We're always trying to, you know, bring people in to teach us new stuff, investing in masterminds, um, so we're always growing, I guess, long story short. No, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's, I think fundamentally it's about, it's about being open to all these new things that are coming out in the world, right? Because, you know, who, who saw TikTok coming a year ago, right? No one did in terms of billions of downloads now. It's, it's crazy. And yeah, I mean, as long as you're open, you'll, you'll find out what works, right? Because ultimately at least you're opting in, you're trying, you're not ignoring a trend in some sense that's that's gaining popularity because of whatever reason it might be but yeah i mean ultimately it's about just keeping your keeping your options open and experimenting figuring out if it works and then failing fast right if it doesn't work then okay we'll come back we'll come back to it later maybe at a different time and experiment with a different in a different way so yeah i mean no it's it's been look um, that's all the questions i have it's been amazing 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 to have you on the podcast man uh, really, really enjoyed talking to you. I think uh, a lot of our philosoph- life philosophies actually align a lot. And it will be really good to sort of uh, stay in touch and sort of help each other as we as we grow the businesses that we have. Yeah, for sure. Likewise. No, again, thank you for the opportunity and stuff and the time. And yeah, I agree with everything you said just there. So <laughs> it's, really, it's really good to talk to you. You made my day. Hey, likewise. You made mine. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'll catch you later. Bye. Alright, enjoy. Take care.